The Rainbow Family is a loose-knit group of people from across the world. Each summer, they hold a national gathering where they pray for world peace. This year, they chose the White Mountains. As See, that's fucked up because you would automatically assume with the rainbow that these were some fucking goddamn fucking weirdos and shit. You would think these were some fucking weirdos because they got the rainbow. But really, they they just they probably been doing this for decades, even before the um goddamn mafia stole the stole the rainbow. Because I remember a time before the mafia stole the rainbow, man, when rainbows were just rainbows, man. <laughs> a rainbow was just a fucking rainbow. Yeah, frosted lucky charms. Which one? Which was the one? The cereal with the rainbow on it. Remember reading rainbow? Press one if you remember reading rainbow. Reading rainbow and shit, man. And fucking cereal with rainbows on it. They fucking took that shit. <laughs> now you got now every time you see somebody with a fucking rainbow, first thing you think is they're fucking weirdo. The Rainbow Family is a loose-knit group of people from across the world. Each summer, they hold a national gathering where they pray for world peace. This year, they chose the White Mountains as their spot. This is an unauthorized group use that's occurring on the White Mountain National Forest. Hillary Markin with the White Mountain National Forest says about 1,300 people are already there. And they're expecting a little over a thousand more to come up for the 4th of July. We've been encountering um, several instances of damage to natural resources. We have encountered drugs coming into the gathering that our officers have been on site um, to deal with. And as well as infrastructure that's being built. Littleton police reports dozens of people are facing violations. Markin says there was about 70 court cases on the docket addressed by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Still, she says many in the group have been helpful in the past. They do have um, members of the Rainbow family that typically stay on site to help uh, rehabilitate the land and the impacts from this gathering. And we're hopeful that that will happen again this year. They usually have people that stay on site and clean up. Let me, let me translate that for y'all. They clean up after themselves and don't just leave the fucking trash that they fucking accumulate out there. Have been helpful in the past. They do have um, members of the Rainbow family that typically stay on site to help uh, rehabilitate the land and the impacts from this gathering. And um, we're hopeful that that will happen again this year. Markin says most people are expected to leave the area after the 4th. This morning, two people are facing charges after New Hampton police say they were found in possession of a stolen car in the Kelly Drake Conservation Area. One of the suspects, Jason Fournier, was also allegedly found with suspected meth and fentanyl. Police say while he was in the cruiser, he forced his way through the partition and then took off into the woods. The chief says he was found in a nearby lake trying to swim away while still handcuffed. <laughs> Hey man, shout out man. Rep, he rep in New Hampshire well, man. Hey man, salute man, salute to him man. I ain't even mad at him man. We need some action up New Hampshire man. Thanks for making thanks for making this um this trip to New Hampshire a little bit more exciting for us man. Salute to you bro. In the Kelly Drake Conservation Area, one of the suspects, Jason Fournier, was also allegedly found with suspected meth and fentanyl. Police say while he was in the cruiser, he forced his way through the partition and then took off into the woods. The chief says he was found in a nearby lake trying to swim away while still handcuffed. He and the woman he was with, Nicole Horn, were already on probation. Hold on, Nicole Horn, man. In bad. Looked man. like they couldn't. This morning, two people are facing charges. Let me see Nicole Horn, man. Yeah. I'd, have jumped, I'd have jumped into a lake with handcuffs on, too, man. Shit. Fuck. I ain't gonna lie, man. That's enough to make you jump into a lake with handcuffs on. 
Hey, Christ. Shit. What's up with her hairline, too, man? Hey. Damn, Jason. You could have did better than that, Jason, man. Salem police have arrested a man suspected of injuring a woman in a road rage incident. Police say 50-year-old Anthony Agnew of Salem was driving his truck when he got into a confrontation with a woman in another car. The two pulled into a parking lot where police say he grabbed her and started driving and dragging her along. Agnew faces multiple charges, including assault, reckless conduct, and disorderly conduct. Mm. Hey, man. Listen, man. Monica, really such a scary situation. And she said it all happened here in her backyard. This all happened around 1130 a.m. this morning. 64-year-old Lynn Kelly said she ran out to check on the dog who was barking, and that's when she saw the bear. She said she tried to look big and yell and scare the bear, but it didn't work. He kept coming toward her, so she punched him and he bit her. She started bleeding right away, so she ran back in the house and called 911. It took about 45 minutes for police and fire to get here, and she was taken to Memorial Hospital in North 45 minutes for police and fire to get there, man. Shout out to the fucking glider with Queen punching the fucking bear in the face, man. I'd have been running. Shout out to I shout out to Abe the Hunter, man. He says, What if that is <laughs> man, <I ain't... laughs> Said, what if that's brown sugar, man? Leave brown sugar alone, man. Y'all here, <laughs> y'all terrible. Brown sugar, that, 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 that's not brown sugar. That that would have been fucking, fucking white sugar, man. Sugar, sugar. Right away, so she ran back in the house and called 911. It took about 45 minutes for police and fire to get here, and she was taken to Memorial Hospital in North Conway, where she was treated for four puncture wounds. Wildlife officials in Maine also told us these attacks are incredibly rare, and they've only heard of a handful in the last few decades. They also say they haven't seen the bear since the attack, and they've set up two traps to try and capture it. And again, we have a full interview with Lynn that we'll share later tonight. We're live in Porter, Maine. Ariel Metropolis, W. When you walk. Wow. She got attacked by a bear, man. She lucky, man. Perhaps give me another city, man. Give me another city, man. See this guy, this clown right here. <laughs> Court documents say the driver, allegedly involved in a deadly hit and run, knew he hit someone but waited through the weekend to tell police. News 9 investigates obtained the probable cause statement for an arrest warrant in the death of Kimberly Lucier. She was hit and killed in Rochester on the night of June 2nd, a Friday night. That warrant says Christopher Robinson hit Lucier while she was walking on Milton Road, but then panicked and drove home. The document says Robinson called his father on Monday asking for an attorney so he could turn himself in. Robinson is charged with conduct after an accident. Conduct after an accident? What the fuck is that? Court document. Some man would never did that, man. That glider turned himself in, man. The fuck? <laughs> 